Temperature might be one of the most practical words we have in the human language. During this pandemic, we use it as a straightforward test for a fever. We use it to tell us if it's cold outside and how many layers we need to put on. At least for the summer and winter, you can more or less tell what season it is by looking at the temperature. We have all heard that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, and when cooking, we often check the internal temperature of meat to see if it's cooked. Temperature is everywhere. Looking at all of these images, you might be constructing a feeling in your mind that the meat is warm and this beer is cold. When scientists talk about temperature, you often hear people talk about the Kelvin scale. It goes from absolute zero to positive infinity for all intents and purposes. But for all the intuition we have as humans about temperature, is there still some mystery behind this quantity? Could it, for example, sometimes be negative? Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Jonathan Riddell, and today we will answer this question about whether or not temperature can be negative. To do this, we need to remind ourselves of a few key things. First is, what is the definition of temperature? 1 over the temperature is defined as the derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy, where we keep volume and particle number fixed. For the sake of our example, the entropy will be given in the usual way. It is the Boltzmann constant times the natural logarithm of the number of accessible microstates W. To put this on more intuitive grounds, we can think of it in the following way. Let's say some physical thing that I am modeling has energy E1. Then we denote the corresponding entropy as S of E1. We can do the same here for some other energy E2. For the sake of our example, let E2 be greater than E1. Then we can approximate the temperature by writing it in the following way. Here we see that 1 over the temperature is just a slope or the rate at which entropy changes with respect to changes in energy. For a typical situation, as energy is increased, entropy also increases. This makes sense, right? The more energy I have, the more ways I could potentially spread it out amongst the particles in my system. From, from this graph's perspective, we can show the inverse temperature as the slope of the blue line intersecting the curve at the appropriate points defined by E1 and E2. The key takeaway here is as long as increasing energy keeps increasing the number of available microstates, the entropy also increases. This in turn guarantees that temperature will always be positive. From this perspective then, higher temperature would correspond to higher energy. But what if we had a curve that instead looked like this? We see, for example, that at the height of our curve, the slope would be zero, corresponding to infinite temperature. After this point, by increasing the energy, we actually see a decrease in entropy. If such a situation existed, we would have negative temperature. This, this somewhat defies our intuition because the particles in question would then be hotter but would have a negative temperature. So this is fascinating. But could we think of an example where this might actually happen? As it turns out, we've already talked about two examples where this could happen on this channel. But for the sake of time and clarity, let's look at the spin model from the video on entropy. In the video on entropy, we introduced the quantum spin. We said that the spin had energy E if it was up and energy zero if it was down. We ignored any interactions between the spins and only considered the orientation of the spin as the important factor. Models like this play an important role when we have atoms interacting with a magnetic field. And they also are very nice for showcasing concepts in statistical mechanics. Perhaps you can already see where this is going. Let us consider an example system with four spins. If we think about the lowest energy microstate, we see that it is simply all spins being down corresponding to a total energy of zero. 
interestingly here, this is the only way we can have all of the spins be down, so the entropy is zero, since the logarithm of one is zero. Now the highest energy state is constructed with all the spins being up. We get four E as our energy. This state is also unique and corresponds to an entropy of zero as well. In fact, if we let n be the number of spins, the maximum energy microstate is always all spins pointing up. This gives us an energy of n times e. The minimum energy microstate always has all spins pointing down and has an energy of zero. As we saw previously, if I instead want some of my spins to be up, and some of my spins to be down, I can use counting arguments to see how many microstates I have for any given energy. In our case, if we say that we want big U total spins up, then our counting problem tells us that we have N choose U total microstates where U spins are up and the rest are down. And just a reminder quickly that the exclamation mark means factorial which tells us to multiply the number given by every positive integer lower than it. Therefore, in a model like this, if we sit at a particular energy level, we can easily count the number of microstates associated with our given macrostate information. We can calculate the entropy in the usual way with the number of available microstates. And we have that the number of microstates is n, choose the number of upspins. We can again go to Wolfram Alpha to get some intuition. Let us look at how entropy changes with n is equal to 20 total spins, and we vary the number of upspins. Here we plot the natural logarithm of 20 choose u, where u goes from 0 to 20. The vertical axis here is then our entropy, and the x-axis is the total number of upspins that we have, which then corresponds directly to how much energy we have in our microstates. The highest point for entropy here on the graph is when, all, when we have half the spins up and half of the spins down. After this point, entropy decreases, meaning that we would have a negative temperature. Therefore, we see that in some special cases and special systems of particles, temperature can actually become negative. This, this phenomena can happen in a variety of physical situations. The spin example that we have can be achieved approximately by a system of nuclear spins in an external magnetic field. It also occurs in situations with many lasers and can even be in achieved for less constrained systems like experiments with cold atoms moving around. As always guys, I hope that was interesting. If you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.